That's what I mean. So at least we get that started. And we, I mean, we're ready whenever, I guess, it looks like. Mm -hmm. boom, boom, boom. Notifications on three platforms that we're live iPhone, iPad, and computer. There's my second one on my computer. I suppose it doesn't. I don't know why it does it twice, anyways. No oh, crap, any saves. Huh? Okay, so apparently Duncan Hines has decided to jump on the on the cake in a cup in a microwave thing, and now they make them. Yay. Yeah, so now you can go to the store and you could buy a box. So you could make a cake in a cup, because, you know. You can well, just it, do that. It, it, Recipes I suppose are hard. it's one of those things where it's like individual <laughs> servings and it's probably just easier to like put the batter into a cup and make it. It is. I'm just like, wow. Okay, so that's a thing now, apparently. <sighs> okay. Are we ready to begin? I think we're ready to begin. Uh, I'm ready. And so Chester doesn't yell at me or anything? Or anybody? Uh, what are you doing? I'm going to say we're live. Ah. Uh. Okay. And cut that one. Ah. Uh, on the website. On Facebook. And the Facebook. Not on the website. Got it. On Facebook. Website, Got I don't it. want to put, like, extra blog posts of us being live. Although, Got maybe it. we should see about maybe a live page or something. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh. Give her a my name. Hello, tablet. You should be on. You're not. Vibrate. I'm still giving a different thing, even though I changed the the image and stuff. I save changes. No, it should automatically save. Anyways, I don't care. I'm just publishing. Oh, okay. All right. Should we get the party started? Sure. I'll get right window and soundboard. All right, let's do this thing. Oh, hold on. <laughs> what happened? Check your sound levels. All no, your I, need, I need to send the, the audio to the right place. So. Mm -hmm. oh. That probably would be a good thing. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to like redo this after this plays because I can't figure out how to just kind of like Put it back around. Anyways. Okay. This is weird. Okay, so... Because I want the whole thing to play properly, so. Are we doing that again? Yeah, we're doing it again. Oh. So we're, are we live? Are we not live? We we're are live. streaming, but we haven't actually started the show. There's a difference. Okay. Got you probably be able to tell because we still have the thing on. if you're at least viewing the video. So, All right, let's try this again. Three, two, one. <laughs> June 11th, 
11th, 2017. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. And that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. And welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of a Determined Life, episode number 419. And boy, am I just screwing up this morning. But that's okay. You guys probably didn't notice on the audio podcast. But if you were watching the video show, yeah, you know everything. Anyways, so subscribe to us so you can watch it. In the meantime, we have a guest today. We have Cisco. Hello. Yay. Good Yay. one. We have a, another scientific study to talk about today. Um, science. Uh, science. Um, <laughs> so, Thanks for it. the enthusiasm. <laughs> one of the reasons Get why it. we have him on. Um, Get another sound. <laughs> all right. So, yeah. Maybe, maybe that's what we need to do. Science. Anyways. <laughs> That should be your intro clip. Anyway. <laughs> but, in the to, so, but first, let's start with that. So, like, just like yesterday, uh, last week, yesterday, um, I've just been getting back into Diablo and playing some Diablo and trying to get through uh, the season 10 Thing. So it's kind of like World of Warcraft is kind of getting just mildly onto the back burner. Like I'm still doing it and still doing stuff in there. So but it's in the middle burner. Yeah, something like that. But you know how, how some of them have the big burners and they have the small burner? I moved it from the big burner to the small burner and put on some Diablo. And then, so, so it's simmering. Like, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> put it down low, put the cover on top. There it's like you a go. nice rice that cooks longer. There you than, go. The, uh, it's actually in the crock pot slow cooking there, there we go. go maybe that's just what it is <laughs> i don't know i'm just <laughs> are these cooking buzz working for you guys <laughs> so weird mm, boy. <laughs> so, but otherwise uh air, air conditioning is affixed i think last Yay. week i, I that. Yeah. uh it had this weird thing where it just wasn't working and then it was working, but the the outside unit was just spinning all the time, like constantly. Uh, so it was the outside part was on, but my inside fan, which kind of like moves stuff around inside the apartment, takes the cold air into it. Um, it was just the outside unit was just constantly running. Somehow that got fixed because uh, it's like they said they checked it, and I go out and check to to verify, and it was still going. I'm like ah, oh. but then the next day. It was fine, so that's good. So Sonnen and I have been keeping cool, which is good in Austin summer. Yes. Bingo card, wow. talking about Austin and heat and stuff. So. Well, it's not summer yet, officially. Oh, it's it, we're talking about Austin here. There's a different date for summer, which was like a month and a half ago. Because we have, we have we have winter and summer. We don't really have a spring or fall. It's God. How hot is it right now? Um, let me check. Although it's been kind of cool right now, but it is currently eighty degrees, ninety-two degrees. What? Um, High of eighty-eight at around three p.m. Central Time. According to the weather app on my phone. Version. Okay, oh, it's, it's it warmer not here. that bad. <laughs> Moving on, yeah, Damon. So now I'm trying to figure out. Where... <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, it is 86 here. It's warmer here than it is there. Huh? Funny that. Um. Anyway, it random. just rained. I don't know. Oh, maybe Gold that's front? it. Okay. So, um, yeah. So I'm pretty much getting ready for, um, the CMCs, the men's choruses, um. Oh. There we go. Um, our Pride concert, I believe. Bless you. <laughs> uh, I believe when this episode airs, um, we'll actually be on stage, perhaps. Anyway, 
um, next week. So, no, not next week. Two Wait, weeks from now. Are you anyway. doing this at like 8 o'clock in the morning? No, 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 so no. So, no. this airs before then, so. Got it. Never mind then. Anyway. Find me why you bullshit. Anyway. Um, so, that's pretty much been it. Getting ready for a private concert. Doing really, keeping busy with them. Um, but also being low-key. Um the weekends and work has been kind of busy and crazy. So when the weekends come, I don't want to do much. <laughs> oh, I like, thought you were being a, a, a tr- very trickstery because you said you were going to be Loki. Uh... <laughs> Good one. Uh, I got for my dad wow. Drink. I am a uh, dad. I got a, my 13 year old is currently curled up on the couch. So. Oh. So, yeah. Anywho. So, no. Um, just, you know, so when the weekends come, I don't really do much. Like, I've been home pretty much, and we went out to dinner yesterday. And, um, yeah, it's just low key kind of staying home and on the weekends mostly, you know, mm-hmm. busy during the week work during the week um come home and just relax so yeah that's what works for me uh gary (laughs) well first i want to say uh because we kind of skipped over this chester is not with us today because he is on location uh getting drunk around the world in florida so (laughs) that's right that is at this point in time it is exactly happening right now. In fact, I'm kind of like live watching Facebook to see what he's posting because last I saw they were in Mexico and they were drinking tequila. So, oh, my. <laughs> see, yeah. I would probably want to do a world beer tour when I was there. Just go to each one and try to try a beer because that would probably work a little bit better. Yeah, I think you I think you can choose between the two. I sent actually Chester a link to a blog that uh posts to Facebook about food at all the Disney properties in the US, which is very interesting. And so um uh I didn't tell him this part, but apparently Mexico is getting new margaritas that are hand shaken and made as opposed to like in a machine. Uh yeah. but those aren't live yet, but more interestingly is that there was recommendations on some newer drinks at different countries. So I was like, Hey, in case you didn't know so, yeah. you know, since he's playing hostess with the mostess, um, he got the shirts made for the guys that are traveling around uh, Epcot in their red shirts. So well, we can the... plug them. They are friends of the show. They're the men of the den. Yeah. Uh, which you can subscribe to on YouTube as well. So, yeah, Aaron, uh, Greg, Derek and the gang, a whole bunch of them. And like people who like men of the den, people who like see well, they're all together in some big uh, collective mob of red shirted bears getting drunk apparently so there's that and evan unfortunately or fortunately whichever you want to say <laughs> is having his cherry pop by not only going to epcot but being immersed in epcot via the, the, the drinking around the world thing that they're doing you know uh, when i went to epcot last time i would have loved to have done that but we barely spent time of course this was also back when i was 21 so ah uh. Time for me to go back and have the uh, drinking around the world challenge. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, that's what Chester's doing. So he's on location uh, reporting back on that at some point. And uh, for me, um, <clears throat> the challenge of pride, now that uh, June is upon us, there's a lot of like, um, there's just a lot of feelings people are posting online about Pride. Like a lot of people on Facebook are using those new borders. So, you know, it's either big Pride or different stuff like that. But I noticed some other people are kind of like, you know, I don't want to say being political, but they're kind of in the mindset of, you know, it's like, uh, I think the climate of our country right now and the world is really kind of weighing on people. So they're kind of, I guess, not uh, enthusiastic Um, about it. There's issues going on with various prides around the country. Uh, One that's close to me that's a big one. It came under fire because it let the event be renamed uh, because of a hefty contribution from a business. Mm -hmm. And that business is a little little bit of turmoil on some of its practices. And that doesn't have anything to do with just the LGBT community. It's just their nature as a business. So um, yeah, like people are kind of like squabbling a little bit about, you know, is like, is 
what is pride? You know, how can you be proud? Is it for sale? I mean, there's just a lot of this conversation type stuff going yeah. on. So I find it interesting because I personally am about to go to Detroit um, this next coming weekend, timey wimey, when this airs. Uh, and I'll be there with Drew, and we're going to be at Detroit Pride, which I've never been to before, so I'm kind of excited. Huh. Um, and then um, I'm going to have Pride here in Erie at the end of the month as well. Uh, so, you know, it, it, I think everyone's yeah. kind of got a different take on things. But I think it's a challenge right now because a couple years ago, it was, you know, hugely celebratory. Yep. And everybody was like riding this emotional high about, you know, marriage equality and all these other things. And then now there's a lot of... Um, consternation about certain things that are happening <laughs> there's our 10 cent word <laughs> <laughs> we need a jar <laughs> <laughs> we did we did we need a jar for the vocabulary stuff so yeah i am um, i'm just i'm really surprised like some people are coming for other people online you know some yeah. people are being supportive of the community and then the community quote unquote community collectively is coming back and basically clapping back and being like no <laughs> like not a friend like uh, you like you don't get to claim you know that you're supportive of us when in fact you are not which i so i think <laughs> i want to, I, I don't like you on. but i want your money our our opposite <laughs> we don't want your money you don't have to like us <laughs> we know you don't really like us our, yeah there's there's support uh, people who don't like us and have made it pretty clear that they don't like us. And so. yet they will support an event. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's what I, that's why I say you know for me it's the challenge of pride. You know we're we're in this month. I mean I have some people that are actually so upset they're just like you know I'm I'm not proud. Like I, there's nothing to be proud of at this moment. It takes <laughs> me back a long time ago to when I was in college and had a, a deep conversation with a friend, best friend of mine at the time. Because they just have a different mindset than I did. I was like, how could you not be proud? And they were like, I could care less about, you know. I was like, okay. I just <clears throat> didn't understand. Well, so, you so. can also be proud and not necessarily go to Pride for various reasons. Like, it's in the middle of June and it's freaking hot. The heat There's just that. deters you from the, the Pride event. But it doesn't mean you don't have Pride. There's that. That's awesome. Yeah. In that case, I would just say that's poor planning. <laughs> because most major cities in the South, I say most, there's no statistical analysis of this. Everybody calm down. Um, <laughs> that's for you, Cisco. Uh, um, yeah, I thought so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there, most, to my knowledge, most major cities in the South, because it is so hot like you know, and oppressive as far as like heat and humidity in the summer, actually move their pride out of the month of pride quote unquote in june to august or september october whatever like they just shift it and move it to a better climate uh time and i get that like yeah so it's not in the traditional month but you know it's still pride yeah. mm -hmm. that being said uh cisco what have you been up to it's been a while since you were on with us quite yeah last time was october of last year so a lot of things have happened since then um i'm gonna run through a quick summary because we could spend hours and hours uh, talking about what has happened. Um, but so in February, I got an invitation for a job talk at University of Tennessee Health Sciences Center. And I got a postdoc position, which is kind of like a job as a doctor, but still in training. So that's, that's why I put it in boats, <laughs> job. Um, yeah, so I got uh, I got the offer. Things are moving along. Uh, it sounds that I'm going to be starting on July 17th there. I'm going to be doing research um, and some clinical work as well for substance use. Um, there's two big projects right now. One of them is uh, smoking cessation, quitting smoking, um, tobacco cigarettes. And the other one is um, pain medication, how to... Mm with pain medication or at least use it in a way that's going to be helpful instead of uh, not helpful. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I'm going to be doing that and then my own project. I'm interested in positive psychology and I want to start my own uh, uh, intervention for smoking. Um, mm -hmm. Briefly, positive psychology tells us that there's strength in people that they can use 
overcome or uh, decrease symptoms of depression, anxiety, etc. Yeah. There has not been a lot of research on substance use, so I would like to start that line of research. Um, and UTHSC seems like a very good place for me to start doing that kind of stuff. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, seems like a very good team, very productive. So Sweet. I'll be joining them pretty soon. Um, second thing, which is, it was very important. I'm finally a U.S. resident. So I got my green card in March, end of March. Yay! Uh, I know that we briefly talked about the, the whole process of that uh, last time. So I wanted to give you an update on that. Uh, it was it was a very nerve-wracking process, but it, it's... Relatively over. Um, yeah, <laughs> okay, so good. I, yeah. I have a question about that, just to, for clarification. So you got your green card in March. Mm -hmm. uh, where does this put you in the process? Because you said it's kind of over, but I imagine there's more to come. There's way more to come. So in so right now I'm a permanent resident, but I have since I have been married less than two years to my husband. Um, there's this restriction that I need to reapply in two years. Um, and get that hold or that restriction removed, and then uh, I I can renew it every ten years uh, instead of every two years. Um, uh, one new thing that I learned from from the officer um, is that on so in three years I can apply for my naturalization, my citizenship. So I thought it was going to be longer than that. So it's pretty exciting that it's going to be shorter and hopefully in time for me to vote for the next election process i hope if we have the money and the resources and all that stuff um yeah so um it brings me closer to citizenship but it's still a few years away from from being able to do that so let's say you do that in the two years like is it in perpetuity like every 10 years for the rest of your life like living in america you have to keep like renewing that? If I choose to just be a resident, yes. Okay. Um, if I choose to um, become a citizen, then that is permanent. Okay. Yeah, so I, I don't have to reapply for citizenship every amount of time. It's just set, at least how laws are right now. That's, that's the rule. Right. Yeah. Mm. Well, I'm glad you said that because I know I'm not well versed on it by any means. So I was getting confused. I was like, "Oh, all right, got it." So there's yeah. residency, and then there's actual citizenship. Mm -hmm. Citizenship is probably what people are familiar with when they see like a picture from the local courthouse of all the individuals. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that that is uh, the the ceremony. Before that, you need to submit all your paperwork, be interviewed, and that's just the the culmination of the whole process. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's when you you swear allegiance to the United States, and you lose your citizenship of birth. I'm not sure if that's uh, the correct term, and then embrace your new citizenship, American citizenship. Cool. Yeah. Yay. So we're getting closer to that. Um, uh, let's see. Because I got my. Uh, green card, I was able to visit my hometown after six and a half years of not being there, so it was pretty... Yeah. It, was, it was an interesting experience. Um, wow. Saw a, I saw a lot of differences, uh, but in a way, it, it, still, it still felt familiar. It still felt um, like home. That's good. Yeah, there, there was a, a lot of nostalgic moments during that, that week when I was there. Um, so I was, I was pretty good. Um, we got a new furry baby in Memphis. Aww. Aww. Yeah, she's so cute. <laughs> she's a little, she's a little uh, black kitty. Um, Edgar, my husband, found found her outside of his job. Sounds like either mom dropped her there or someone dropped her there. Um, so he picked her up and now it's at home and we're not getting rid of her <laughs> she's part of a family now and she's she's so cute so curious and we have been having some trouble with our old cat he's three years old but he's the old cat um but it sounds that he's accepting her a little bit more now i hope that we keep making progress on that and our dog just loves her <laughs> which is good 
Nice. Yep. And last thing in a couple of, no, well, yeah, like a, okay, so this is another of those processes where it, it takes a very long time. Um, in three weeks, I will be finishing my internship, the, the reason why I came here to Albuquerque, um, which means that that's the, the last hurdle I have to pass for me to get my PhD. And then my degree will get conferred on in August when commencement happens. So I still won't be able to call myself a doctor after finishing my oh. internship, but um, after August, I, I can call myself a doctor. <laughs> Almost there. Almost there, yeah. It's been a, be a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Nice. So, yeah. Well, that's exciting. We'll have you back, and then we can call you Dr. Cisco. Pretty soon, um, yeah. Hey, August is a great a great time to celebrate something like that, such as like in addition to like my birthday, where we do a power hour. So if you really want to oh, 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 to, to celebrate a power hour around, around August 29th, uh, you're you're definitely welcome to join us. Okay, I'll I'll consider it, but I cannot make promises. <laughs> <laughs> Smart move. Smart oh, move. Are, I've seen those. Those are pretty intense. <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> got, how, how many of them do we have on, on video on our channel? I can't remember. I think I've seen three of them. I think we've had four. Hang on. To this year would be... Dun, da, da, because I have... Oh, a server error occurred. That's nice. Thanks, Google. All right. Um, <laughs> August... Do, 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 do. Power Hour number five is coming up. Oh. Huh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm familiar. <laughs> As a so, fan of the show, you're probably quite, you know, I'll say in you're tune invited. with our antics. <laughs> yeah. Just just inviting you. So okay, whether, thank whether you, you accept much. the invitation around that time, it's fine. It's fine. I'm just Hey, saying. and you know, actually it's a great you way could to be a, you could be a designated uh, you know, Yes, you could just you know drink water the whole time and see how ridiculous the antics are, <laughs> or, or other tasty beverages that are non-alcoholic. That's fine. Okay, you know, I could do that. True. All right. All right. Um, anything else? Um, well, last time I told you guys that I was going, I was planning on going into a balloon ride. Yeah, it's not happened yet. Oh. oh. Yeah. Is everything okay, or is it just kind of wasteful? No, out? yeah, no. Uh, I we have been spending a lot of money this year here, so yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, it's not. It's more for fun rather than a pri priority. So yeah, probably in the in the back burner. It's a a goal, a uh, possibility for fun in the future. Yeah, that's for sure. Thought and, list. Yeah, I, I would I would prefer for my husband and I to do it together instead of just me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we can find out a little better. Aw, it'll be fun. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. And that's that's it. Excellent. Yeah. Um, before we get into our feedback, I do want to remind all of you that uh, I've been dropping some frames here while trying to stream uh, the show. So we really probably need a little bit better computer here. And to help out with that, you can help us by going to gofundme.com slash COL stream. And you can donate. It's a big amount, but I'm trying to make sure I got a nice hefty machine so it can last a while um, uh, to, to make sure that our streams and our, sh our future shows, which eventually turn into audio as well, uh, get better. So, Demon, it's not funny. No, I'm talking. I, I was reading the live chat. Drew's on the live chat. <laughs> oh, I'm not even on the live chat. I don't even know what's going on over there. <laughs> Sorry, uh -oh. it caught me by surprise. And yeah. No, no, Drew. We will not have a power bottom hour. <laughs> it's just something completely different. <laughs> Just say it. Anyways. Uh, sorry. It I obviously continue on YouTube and see what the hell he's up to. <laughs> so, see you. Uh, GoFundMe.com slash so the stream. Another way you can support us and just to have some really cool swag is like I'm wearing my uh, a Cubs Out Loud t shirt, as you probably see most every week here uh, in Texas Orange. There's another uh, bingo spot for those people who are pl playing along. 
Uh, you can get uh, hats, t-shirts. Are either of you wearing one of our shirts? No, not wearing? today. Okay. Well, as a matter of fact, I have oh. to have gotten a new shirt recently Ooh. that, um, you know, so. <laughs> um, Work yeah, it, girl. This, yeah, I know. Mm. Do it tomorrow. Mm. <laughs> so, so this is um this is the baseball style tee, long sleeve. Um, it's not a three quarter length like I thought. It's actually a long sleeve, and because I'm short, they're like way too damn long. But sorry, <laughs> so I push them up. But uh, I realized something interesting about our store because uh, Chester's in Florida, and um, uh, we'll talk about it at another time. But we were trying to make something happen because uh, he was meeting some entertainers, and I realized like I don't think people know that you can actually branch off of what we actually have listed in our store to get other stuff. So this shirt is an excellent example. It's not technically listed in the store, but if you go look at something that has this design, like a regular t-shirt and you look to the right, it says like, see all products or whatever. And then there's like a whole area and you can change what this logo is being put on. So, um, hence I got this, um, and some other things that I'll reveal later on. But, um, that's one of the things I think Jeff, we might look at is, um, trying to uh, maybe pick some more other apparel type things so people understand yeah, like add the, the looks in yeah yeah the, also the, the polos and stuff uh let me see let me see if my thing here yeah. this is so, not gonna look good but i'm actually gonna switch over to a different thing uh-oh. here and i'm gonna see if i can oh wait no that doesn't look good uh no i don't have it set up uh i was gonna try to <laughs> Basically, I was I was going to try to actually show the store so you can see how it works, but uh, I don't have it set up right off hand. Maybe in the future when we go through this. Maybe in the future. But yeah, uh, if you like, you want a t-shirt, long sleeve or baseball or different styles, click on the t-shirt and there's actually a thing along the side that says, says in addition to size, you can also select style. And it has a whole bunch of different styles that you can choose from, such as mm-hmm. the... Uh, baseballs uh, ish type thing. Yeah, sleeves. that's how I. Uh, that's how I got my darker color tee, because it wasn't one of the the tees that were originally there were the the I guess basic colors like in there's, and I was like, oh, those are a little bright. So I went. Yeah, they have. Went in and has a light. Yeah. and there's a second one for the for the more darker basic dark t shirt and. Yeah, uh, men's American. I don't know what that means. And like, uh, also uh, Brady has uh, uh, one of the Ringer tees, which is also a different selection. So there's plenty yeah. of different types of, of t-shirts, and uh, like you can even get like a spiral tie dye, a one that's called a cyclone tie dye. You get a camouflage, all sorts of different t-shirts. And this is true on most anything that we have in the store. So. Before you actually just purchase and select color, check out those styles and uh, some of the other things have different types of things. So. Yeah, so like I know that some people aren't like they're kind of particular about cotton versus cotton poly or whatever. Um, there's actually some really nice, uh, I think they're 100% poly or like rayon whatever mix, but they're kind of like a really nice light shirt for summer and they have dry wicking uh, type things. So like if that's something that you, you know, want. Um, I would just say, you know, play around and look, but no, I agree with you, Jeff. Like, um, we might want to look at figuring out if there's a way to show like, Hey, watch this little video snippet. And it shows people how they can play around in the store basically and find all sorts of things. And I agree with you. Cause like Damon said, like we have one basic shirt listed in the store, but then if you look, there's, I think there's like eight different kinds of t-shirts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and it's not just about like men's versus women's cuts. I mean, or unisex, there's, you know, some V-neck and that, but then that's where you start seeing like all the colors are optional. So like, I think there's like bright coral and, you know, electric blue and all sorts of crazy stuff. So, yeah. Cool. Customize away, and uh, as we've said before, uh, there's usually some sort of discount code going on, so you can. So just because it has a certain price, it might be a little bit cheaper if you can use one of the discount codes that they have available. So trust. Check I bought out. everything on discount. <laughs> <laughs> Two ways of getting there: CubsOutLoud.com, click on the Seawall merchandise, or just go to Zazzle.com/CubsOutLoud and check them out. And uh, let's go on into where's my thing? This. 
Gary, uh, was anything going on in Facebook? A little bit. Uh, not much like before, but uh, we do have two new Facebook likes, so we would like to thank the following individuals for liking us on Facebook. Ben Johnson and Xavier Champion. Nice. Sounds like a great athlete's name for the Olympics. Anyway, <laughs> um, so yeah, we got a couple likes over on Facebook. And Damon, I think we have a new subscriber. Yes, we do. Um, we have... Larstol seven four four, or Larstol seven four four on YouTube. Welcome, welcome. And one thing, one thing I teased in a previous episode. Uh, we also got this. So somebody decided to leave their uh, voicemail message <coughs> on our voicemail. That's fun. <laughs> hey, yeah, so, th- so now we have in our voicemail the mm-hmm. outgoing voicemail <laughs> Britney Spears message that somebody had. So That's lovely. That's... Thank you. <laughs> so, hey, we got a voicemail. Although, I honestly, I probably would have lost my mind if they could have somehow edited it or actually had it that it sounded like Brittany was like, thanks for calling. It comes out loud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would have been nice. That but been yeah, you can uh, reach, a, leave your own voicemail, sexy or otherwise. Uh, funny. If you want to, because that, that's the last two has been something that was really funny. Uh, at uh, 361 CL, we'll talk to 361 265 8255. Um, also linked on the website and our about us page. So check it out. Anyways, Gary, tell us what's going on today. All right. So the reason we have Cisco on is because he has agreed to sort of be our resident expert when it comes to this crazy stuff that goes online that basically makes a claim because there was a study um and i use the quote study not to to be you know diminutive of of actual science science but um the reality is like as cisco no you knows uh i think it was either last october or maybe the time before that like we we had this big kind of like like people post these articles and then you kind of read the article and if you actually read the study you start to question like the validity of what's being claimed. Now, today might be a different case, though. So I spotted this, I think, back when it posted. I think it was in April, if I recall. Um, this is an article over on Jezebel.com uh, yeah, about the end of April. And the title of the article is Born to Bottom, Researchers Report Biological Correlations in Anal Sex Role in Gay Men. And I was like, Arr? <laughs> okay, <laughs> this this title is trying to say that research has been done and there may actually be a biological, a possible genetic, I think genetic is very loosely used as a term here, um, concept that we may choose our role in sex, be it top, verse, or bottom, based on some predisposition type stuff. Uh, and I was like, oh, yeah, okay, this is a thing. Like, we need to have a discussion about this because I think a lot of people are going to call shenanigans. <laughs> um, so the article is a, a little long, but the reason I think it's long is because of all the articles we've kind of had about research and studies so far, this one actually seems a little thorough mm-hmm. that it it goes over a couple of different things. And then actually, of course, when it gets to the end, it makes its point. But I I wanted Cisco to come on because I'm like, all right, we've got this person who works in the field of research and study, and I think that he can help uh, distill what really is being claimed versus what they found and whether or not there's any truth to this. Because yeah. I think amongst all of us as co-hosts, we feel we know what our sex role is. But I never considered necessarily that there's a possibility that it was predetermined or, um, you know, based on varying factors. Like, I didn't really think much about that. So, and then obviously this article did. So, um, 
Yeah, the the thing here is it, it starts off with talking about, I think it was back in 2004, there was an article in Pediatrics about um, whether or not genetics and, and other things are the primary factor, because that's been something I think that's been talked about for a long time. And I think that particular article was basically like, meh, there's nothing <laughs> definitive. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so, usually with... Uh, topics of sexual orientation. Um, I, I think they introduced the, the article pretty well, um, mentioning that we don't know. We actually don't know what makes people gay, what makes people straight at the same time. So we don't know what. But on the other hand, usually when we ask about whys or causes, we think about one thing, right? Um, if I push something, then it's going to fall. So what 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 caused the fall was, was me pushing it, right? Uh, it's not that easy most of the times because it's gravity, it's uh, inertia, it's many other things, right? So with uh, genetics and biology and these kinds of studies, it gets even even more convoluted, even more <laughs> nuanced than that, right? Um, so it is true that whether sexual orientation or anal sex role, uh, May, we may not find like one single thing that's going to be causing it. But what we can do is start investigating what things are related to sexual orientation or gender nonconformity or um, uh, anal sex role, right? And that the more we investigate, the more we have an idea of what components are related to it. Um, with this kind of research, it's very difficult for us to imply causation. So I want to, to make that um, pretty clear at the, at the onset of, of, of this conversation because none of the studies mentioned on the Jezebel article are um, experiments. So with experiments, mm. you have a control group, you have an experimental group, and then that those y your... Um, purpose is for you to control as many variables as possible so that you can only have one variable affecting whatever you're looking for. Huh. In this case, most of these um, studies are correlational, meaning we find relations between two or three variables and we can find how much they vary together, uh, but we're not implying any kind of cause, which I think is one of the things that most of this uh, articles that you find online imply, but it's 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 not correct. It's not correct. <laughs> so based based on that, we we can give these studies a little more uh, credit for that matter. Again, we're not implying at least with these studies, we're not implying that there's biological causes to, or that we only have biological causes to um, anal sex role. Or sexual orientation or gender nonconformity. What we're trying, what, what they're trying to do here, at least the, the researchers who did one of the studies mentioned in this uh, Jezebel article, is to find some components that relate to biological things. So they are, um, by proxy, they're, they're studying candidness, which we know has some biological components to them, um, but it's even handedness is not purely biological. Um, so it, it can get really, really confusing for someone who doesn't know how to interpret these studies um, on how to interpret the, the, the results of this. Yeah, so I will own that the reading this article was quite confusing. And even that's them like summarizing and kind of keeping it down. I was like, what? What is, what, what, what is this? Right, and that's so. part of why I wanted Cisco to come on, because there's this whole, if you read the article, it's kind of like, all right, we've got this, like we got a little preface, we kind of got this, and then all of a sudden, I felt like they took a left turn at Albuquerque moment, Yeah, <laughs> and they just start talking about like handedness, and I'm like, wait, what, I, I thought I was going to read an article about whether or not, like, you know, my whatever made me a bottom or a top or whatever. And instead, we're talking about, like, handedness. And I'm like, uh, this, you're not connecting this back to how I jack off. So, or <laughs> like, I don't understand what's happening here. So what do they mean by handedness? Does that mean, like, if they're left-handed or right-handed or what? Yeah, but even then, um, we we see variability. So most of the times, we have most people be, being 
right-handed or left-handed, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, but some people, for some activities, they use their right hand most of the times, and sometimes their left hand. Sometimes they are more um, uh, proficient with one hand for some things, but not for the other. So the measure that they used for at least, well, for the for two of the studies that they mentioned, for two of the major studies they mentioned on the Jezebel article, um, they rated different activities and which one, which hand they used the most, and they calculated a score, and that score leads us to know um, how close they are to completely right-handed or completely left-handed. What's their dominant hand? The dominant hand, doesn't exactly. Mean, doesn't mean they're strictly that hand, just they're more that hand than the other. Exactly, yeah. And again, there's there's some research that ties handedness to bio biological components. But that doesn't mean that the only factor involved in handedness or which hand you use the most um, is purely biological because people can learn or practice to use one hand for one thing more than the other. And uh, so we, we know there's flexibility. Bio biology is not the only contributor. So same thing with uh, anal sexual role. Um, so imagine that you're investigating uh, something in, in a forest and you see something that looks like a tree and you call it a tree just because it's in the forest. May not be a tree, but since it's, it's in the forest, you may say, okay, it's, it's a tree. Um, basically, that's, that's what happens with this kind of, of, um, of research. You are considering something as a proxy for something else. So handedness as a proxy for something biological. And you... Again, w without the knowledge of how to read these articles, you may lose that part of, of what's being communicated. Um, did that make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in terms of biology, the, the actual researchers didn't did anything other than handedness for the biological component of it. So... It's looking at only one thing that's not purely biological and trying to extrapolate that into anal sex, sexual role. Um, there's different problems with that. Um, again, it's a little out of the scope of the Jezebel article to go into, the, into that detail. Uh, but then again, this article is trying to summarize and trying to provide some information about these two articles. And the message got lost. There. Mm. Yeah, so, so there, according to, I mean, according to the, the summary, the Jezebel article, there are a few biological components that may contribute to people being tops, bottoms, or verse. Um, but they are not, again, it's not 100%. The effect sizes I saw were pretty, pretty small, which means that the relationship is there, but it doesn't happen all the time, not even half of the time. Uh, probably it's even less than that. Uh, yeah. But there's, there's, there's a relationship there. That's so, all we can conclude from this. So looking at it, it's like, like if this is the case, there is a high probability, not an absolute probability, a high probability that this yeah. is the case. Yeah. Or at least this, this particular, so handedness, this particular thing is related to um, sexual role. Interesting. In in what way though, Cisco? Like um, like is see. it top right, bottom left, or top <laughs> left, bottom right? Ambidextrous means you're versatile? <laughs> <laughs> Very good question. So if if you go to the Jezebel um, article, there's a few graphs like uh, toward the middle of the article. Mm -hmm. One says anal sex role preference, and then you have the handedness score on your scores on the left. Can you see that? Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. So the, it's very colorful. Yeah, very colorful. And I think <laughs> someone, someone held the, the, I think someone held the, the author of this article to make this tape, this graphs. I'm not sure because I couldn't find them on the original article. Yeah. Um, but it, it shows uh, the exact same information. So as you can see for, so they divided 
they they wanted to distinguish between preference for anal sexual. So what would you like, right? And they distinguish that from actual behavior. So are you being a bottom? Are you bottoming? Are you topping or are you doing both? Um, so the graph on the left doesn't show any significant relationships. There's no little stars there. So that means that in general, most of them have no, depending on preference, um, heterosexual men, bottoms, versatiles, and tops didn't have a handedness effect. They, they just vary randomly. Yeah. For behavior, though, we have, so if you see heterosexual men are more likely to be right-handed than bottoms and verse. Do you see that little star at the very top and yeah, yeah. the line? So that's that's making uh, the statement of there's a significant difference. Correlations. Yeah. Interesting. And then within gay men, let's see. Uh, it sounds like bottoms are more likely. Bottoms and, and verse are more likely to be left-handed than tops. <laughs> I know it's like because when you hear that you have to think about it you're like okay how many tops have I met how many of them do I know or, or what dominant hands well, like, that matter. so hi I'm a left handed top <laughs> <laughs> again more likely but not necessarily 100% true not 100% of the time so you're going to have you, you're going to have variability within that but on average Tops are more likely to be right-handed as opposed to bottoms and verse. Interesting. Now that's the that's the part where the even the authors of the original um, scientific article are making a point that there's some kind of biological component. There's something um, biological affecting the handedness and the anal sex role behavior. Yeah. Um, again, we there's many other questions what, that we need to ask um, because there's there's a lot of uh, yeah. things that we need to get to first but there is something the, the, their claim is that there is something biological it doesn't mean that it's going to be fixed but the, that there is something biological to the you know, sex role at least in, in terms of behavior preference there was nothing there yeah it's kind of, it's interesting. I'm glad you, you kind of broke it down very much. So it kind of makes sense a little bit more to me. Um, it, the thing that I was wondering, I'm curious about is the whole siblings aspect of it as well. I know yeah. that the other two graphs are kind of pointing to that direction. Um, again, um, I, are they, when they do, when they think siblings, are they thinking same mother? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Same mother, yeah. Um, I think for this particular reason, this is the article I was not able to get the full article, but I read the abstract. And um, according to the abstract, it's only taking into account uh, biological siblings from a mother. Got it. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So, so and the study could uh, include half siblings if they have different yeah. fathers. Yeah. Um, yeah, but since what they're trying to do is find or investigate a, a biological connection. Um, there's more, um, I guess it's a safer bet to go for mother yeah. than for father. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're, we're not, not doubting moms, but just in case. Like, for example, I it, have... One thing to kind of be like, well, sometimes it might be difficult to... to just have both of them, but keeping at least that one controlled factor when it comes to parentage uh -huh. is probably a good idea, at least yeah. for this type of study too. Because it's sounding like these studies are meant to get some information, not necessarily find the absolute reason, yeah. which would yeah, lead, okay. to, which I think you've mentioned this before, which would lead to other studies which take the original data and be like, okay, now that we have this data, what can we do to kind of narrow this down to try to find what the absolute reason is? Yeah, but uh, starting with just one mother is probably a good idea. 
Yeah, so this this doesn't tell us anything about order with uh, half siblings or siblings only from <laughs> one or the other. It, yeah. it just it's just telling us about um, particularly for siblings from mom. Um, and this this is one of those effects that uh, so pe uh, researchers have found over and over again, but we still d well at least. Last time I saw, we we still don't know exactly what's going on. There's a few hypotheses here. Um, we know that for gay men, um, you're more likely to be gay if you have more older brothers than if you have less older brothers. Um, the hypothesis that I remember, uh, maybe I need to freshen up on the research, um, is that there's something about losing hormones in the womb the more the, the more children so far, yeah. Yeah. Um, and that that could be one of the biological explanations for um, sexual orientation in, in the direction of, of being gay. Um, but I think that effect has only come up with gay men, not for lesbians. Yeah, like for me, um, I have same mother, I have one older brother and I have a younger sister. Already had a younger sister. She passed away so ten years ago. Um, but anyway, um, I you know it, it's one of those things where I go, oh well. And then I also know that my mother had a couple. Uh, I believe she had a couple of miscarriages before she had me. So I know that there's a possibility of other siblings. There could have been the possibility of other siblings. It's just one of those weird things that I've like that part of the the sibling part of it kind of really touched me. I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. And on the flip of that, um, my partner Jim is the oldest mm -hmm. okay um and he has two younger brothers i don't know anything else i don't know anything else about his family in regards to like what his mother if he um has other i don't believe he has other siblings as far as i can tell mm -hmm. but um it's very interesting and of the three siblings he's the oldest um they're about a year or so apart the middle um sibling uh, middle brother has three sons as well. So it's just this very interesting mm -hmm. correlation. I don't know if any of the, uh, as far as I know, none of them are homosexual, as far as I know. At least they have not come out. Yeah. <laughs> one yeah. just graduated high school, one um, was in college, and one just graduated college. So it's mm -hmm. all like, um, it's very interesting to me how... Um, I just it like just, the correlation that there's three and then three. It's yeah. Very... It, it, it just, if, so if you look at these studies, they're, they're not deterministic. They're probabilistic. As Jeff was saying, you're more likely to have this trait, this result, or, or this um, characteristic, right? So you, you can find, you can find cases like you where you have like, you're maybe, are you the youngest, Damon? Um, I'm or, now... You're the youngest. You're I have a younger youngest. sister. Okay. Yeah. So, so you you find like if you just compile a bunch of people, right, and you ask them about um, their uh, birth order, most of the time you're going to find uh, a pattern where people who have who are the youngest or younger than many of the other siblings are going to be reporting um, being gay. Hmm. Um, but that doesn't mean that all people who have um, older siblings are going to be gay. It yeah. doesn't mean at all either that if, you, if you're the oldest and you only have younger siblings, there's no way you're going to be gay, right? So yeah, it just yeah. puts you, the, there's the pattern like taking a lot of people into account, you will see that effect higher on average for gay men. Um, so of course you're going to find uh, exceptions to that result. But most of the time, or I'm not sure how big the effect is on, on this one, but a significant amount of times you, you will find that to be the case. That's, that's why it's very elusive for us to just point out to one biological factor, right? Um, because it could be hormones in that case, um, but it could be something else. Um, in terms of genetics, uh, we know that if you have a... So for twin studies, where they study twins, um, if one of the twins is gay, there's, I think, a 
may be wrong, so don't quote me on this. There's a <laughs> 70 to 80 percent chance that your twin could be gay or would be gay. Um, and I think that's for both gay men and lesbians, <laughs> I believe. Um, again, it doesn't happen all the time. Happens from 70 to 80 percent of the time. But it's pretty, pretty prominent. You, you, can, you can tell that that's, that's a pattern, right? Um, so that's how, if this were to be more of a biological study, more of that could have been done. But they only, again, they, they were, they were confu not confusing, I don't want to use that word. They, they were uh, approximating or, or telling us that handedness could be one of the biological factors. Something about handedness that's biological is also affecting your sexual orientation and your anal sex role. Um, but it's just one of many factors that could be involved. Yeah. Huh. So, so in the end, so to speak, um, basically I got the feeling that there was nothing definitive. <laughs> Science! <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of agree. I feel like um, there's some quotes towards the end about uh, one of the study uh, leaders. I don't know what you want to say. It's not a participant, but um, they basically say, so. yeah, they say we, for years now, we have anecdotic, anecdotally, oh, I can't talk today, and empirically understand that some association roughly exists between gender uh, typicality. I don't mm -hmm. even know there was a word. And anal sex roles. Most of us in the field have scrambled to understand the underlying influences of the relationship, and the authors of the article provide uh, some well-needed insight into the more innate characteristics that lead to top or bottoming behaviors. So it was kind of like, uh, yeah, if people really want to try to put their finger on something, way more research is needed because this just doesn't really tell us much. Yeah. It is a good start, I believe. It's, it's a good way of introducing a broader range of things. So since um, I believe th this is new research, I believe this is something that has been done just once or twice. Um, so it's a good way of starting other people to keep investigating other factors, other biological factors. Um, but in, in science, sometimes you have to at least make a case that there's something biological to it. So this is a good start for, for that conversation and for other people who may have an idea of, oh, this would be a better way of, of investigating if, or how many biological components could be involved in, in uh, anal sex role. Um, so as with all science, one study is not going to give you the, the answer to everything. It's the compilation of, of research, the body of research, that could answer those questions a little more accurately. Um, if we start finding that this study is replicated over and over and over again, or at least 90% of the time or 80% of the time, then we can be a little more certain that, the, that there's some relationship, some true relationship between handedness and sex role. And if we keep digging and digging, we, we may be able to understand what specifically is affecting handedness and um, sex role. Um, correlational studies, that's, that's one of the, of the things. There may be a third variable affecting these other two things that we're trying to investigate, hand, handedness and anal sex, sex role. We just need to keep investigating to know what that third variable is or what three, four, five variables may be contributing to that relationship. Again, it's not only just one thing that's going to explain the whole, the whole thing. The more, the more we investigate, the, the more we know how much this is true. Wow. Yeah, the, the interesting thing to me was they also go into, and I'm glad they own this in the Jezebel article, they talk about where the study was done, how many participants there were. And the most important factor I like that they pointed out was that it was very skewed. Yeah. Um, in terms of when they did it, uh, it was 2015, I think, at Toronto Pride. Yeah, I believe they and said. through Facebook, too. I, I read the original article. They, they capture more people through Facebook than through the Pride Festival. Hmm. 
Yeah, so they said the respondents were overwhelmingly overwhelmingly white with 301 right. on the hand of disability, uh, 302 in the birth order. And they go on to explain, they break down, you know, the uh, persons of color kind of demographics if they get some, notably 15 used other and one declined to answer. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, I found that I was like, well, good, at least they're kind of like, they're actually digging out some details in this article compared to other ones where I think it's more about yeah. putting out a headline. This one actually was... The author says, you know, like, I find this stuff interesting, and here's kind of what it says, but, you know, in the end, it yeah. still doesn't tell us. <laughs> well, it gives us, it gives, I think what it does, which is a good, it, it, it gets you thinking, and that's one of the things I like about articles like this, is it gets you thinking, and you, maybe, maybe some people may overthink it, but for the yeah. most part, you're, you're kind of thinking about, it. oh, you know, what other things could potentially mm-hmm. play a role in, in what I do? You know, um, I know for me, um, I was at one time a bottom, and I then became exclusively a top. I was a bottom in college, and the role switched at some point in time, and since then I've kind of been pretty much exclusively a top. I have the, I like to consider it the, I'm I'm the Cinderella. Like, there's, there's a special, there are certain special sort of factors that will affect if I ever bottom again. Mm-hmm. So it, it's it's a rarity that I've ever ca- encountered all of those things in one person. Mm-hmm. Are well, yeah, one person. Oh, yeah, so. and the the Jessville article also talks about another researcher who does more of the um, psychosocial investigation of um, yeah of anal sex role. And that's one of the things that they, they found in the re- in their research that your your sex role develops. It's not it's not it's not a thing that you discover and then you stick to it and that's it. You never change it. Uh, you actually develop it, and it's 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 mostly about. Let me see if I can find the the actual quote. I think it's yeah, I, about being comfortable. Yeah, it says. Well, I think what you're referring to, Cisco, is I like this. It comes from. Uh, uh, apparently in January, the Archives of Sexual Behavior, there was uh, something called the Recognition and Construction of Top-Bottom Verse Orientations, Gay Bisexual Men. And it goes on to say that Northwestern University's uh, David Moskowitz and Northwestern University's Michael Roloff examined various factors. And what I found interesting was basically they said sexual position self-label was learned over a 15-year time span. Mm-hmm. And I was like, whoa. Like that's, that to me is like the biggest thing to take away from the article is that like – you it's kind of like when we're in school in the public education system and we're like what do you want to be when you grow up and you're like i don't know like you know because you're you know you're just young and you're having fun and figuring yourself out and going through hormones and puberty and like so the last thing you're thinking about is a career Mm -hmm. and i think the same thing happens when it comes to our sex role quote unquote is that when you figure out that you're that what you're attracted to people want to then turn around and put a label on like well what do you do where are you at um, you know, kind of like, you know, are you gay or, you know, uh, heterosexual or bisexual? Like, I think the same thing happens here. And I was like, wow, like, that's interesting, especially 15 years. Cause that's, mm-hmm. that's kind of a long time to yeah. determine, you know, this is the thing I, I like or how <laughs> I want to, I guess, label myself. Yeah. And it, even when you label yourself, you, you have the, the flexibility of, of changing if all the circumstances arise, like Damon was saying, right? Exactly. (laughs) So, (laughs) yeah, so when you find all the characteristics that you would like to have in a person that you want to bottom or top or whatever, then it can can switch as well. Um, Doesn't mean that the label is gonna make you be stuck in one role. Forever, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just that we we love labels. We, We like calling ourselves something and that like that communicates a lot of stuff in a very short period of time. So we don't want to be explaining to people exactly what characteristics would make <laughs> us bottom, would make us top, would make us flip. Um, <laughs> when you say a top, you save a lot of time. When you say a bottom, you save a, a lot of time explaining it's yourself. So very true. It's so sad. Like if you like, I'll be a bottom if this, 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 and this go into effect. And that's, I mean, that's, that's yeah, okay. Yeah, it's, but it's like, you're like, like, we're like, no, 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 no. I'm, 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 I'm a top. So let's just, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, I, I think, 
I think the thing that I find is like I put on my social, you know, uh, dating apps. Um, I was going to say social media, and I was like, yeah, it's not on Facebook um, <laughs> <laughs> or Google Plus or you know those realms. It, it, and it's not in the network areas, but I, you know state that I'm a bottom but I also pretty much always say you know that's kind of a rare occurrence and then every once in a blue moon someone reaches out and is like well what is a rare occurrence like what does that mean and I'm thinking uh grab a dictionary learn yeah. what the word rare means like I don't know <laughs> why I have to explain this but it comes down to like it's just not a frequent thing because I think people presume once you've you've decided on a label because that's a categorization that you want to participate in or is required, you know, like say if it's an app, whatever, that now people presume that's the thing you do. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed over the years, especially probably over the past two, there's a lot more individuals who are comfortable with saying they are strictly oral or you know, like something along those lines to kind of like make it known, you know, like, yes, while I may identify as a gay man, that does not mean that I'm, you know, going to throw my legs up in the air every single time or, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, kind of take a certain position. And I find that interesting because I think in another maybe five to ten years, we'll see that the landscape has adjusted so much that we're in a in a mindset of where do you fall you know if you think in terms of uh maybe a spectrum or you know uh -huh. a measurement it's kind of like eh, does it really have to be strictly this or that maybe it's just you know kind of somewhere in between yeah yeah that's um at least in psychology we we like seeing things that way in a spectrum like going from one to ten and you can choose instead of just having two options um but that's not necessarily comfortable for most yeah. people, right? You, you you want that answer. You want that one cause. You want that one label that's going to encompass everything that you need to know at a certain moment when you're horny and you want to have sex with someone. Um, so, so, yeah, but unfortunately, the, the labels are never going to go away. But, as, but the understanding that things don't happen just that your sex role is not just like one thing, one time with everything. I think that that may that may evolve a little. Um, I believe that I shared with you guys on an email um, a, a scale of how to measure sexual orientation in three dimensions. Um, uh, so, your how do how do you identify uh, on a scale from one to ten? How do you identify as a gay male or bisexual or whatever? And then there's another um, dimension to it, which, which is attraction. How attracted you are to men on a scale from 1 to 10. How attracted are you to females uh, on a scale from 1 to 10. And also behavior, which is on the times that you have had sex, how frequently have you had sex with men? How frequently have you had sex with women? Um, again, this, this is in general how psychologists see the world. It's not only one thing or a couple of things or through categories. We try to make, we try to measure things in scales and sometimes that also has its, its disadvantages, right? When, as, I, as I'm explaining how sexual orientation could be measured in these three different dimensions, it can get pretty difficult to explain. I know uh, on the new Bill Nye Saves the World show on Netflix, uh, he had an entire episode about sexuality. And one of the things he did was he brought out this big old abacus-ish looking thing and was was showing how everything can be along this line based off of, you know, actual sexual preference, something else. I don't remember what the other one was, but um, he, he, it was all, sh it was showing each of those different things. Uh, so that was pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. So yeah, there's it, another it, thing. <laughs> Watch Bill Nye Saves the World on Netflix. Yeah, <laughs> more indicators. It it brings the nuance that that we need to recognize happens, and that could be pretty uncomfortable for some people who see things as just black or white, or just yes or no, or top or bottom stuff like that. Yeah. So yeah, it takes some time for people to get used to more of that um, way of thinking. Yeah, I think it's a little bit generational, like how 
like what your peer group is a part of and what is available to them. I think of it in terms of like generationally, my grandparents, my parents, mine, those be, like below me, because we, when we had formative years, we had certain concepts that were given to us and how we apply that. And I know right now it most likely is older generations that are like having the struggle of understanding transgenderedness and you know the fluidity of of sexuality and how more younger people are not defining themselves by these labels that have existed since we created them um you know and that kind of stuff so i think it, it will be a while before people are okay with it i think strides are being made in different areas i know that um just last night um, from when we're recording, someone that we know that's been a guest on our show actually was given a title that is new that was created to recognize that gender conformity is a thing that like should be reconsidered. So instead of having you know these defined binary concepts about men versus women, you know, is there more like a, a middle ground or a possibility for that? And I think that that's that's pretty cool that it's starting to happen mm -hmm. uh, that you know changes are, are being made in those areas and how that comes about into the future i, I don't know i'll be serious i'll be cu very curious to see how that um that turns out but yeah i'm i'm hopeful you know for it and i'm just trying to not feel like i'm an old man falling behind the times uh you know and keeping up with with what those things are that are being determined or figured out yeah, and since we're figuring figuring them out, things are going to change. So yeah. it's better not to stick to just what we read right now, but to to look at how it progresses and how it develops too. Cool. Anything else that we should take away from the article? You think? Um, um, let's see. I think those were the main things that I wanted to cover in any any questions you have so i on on my end i think um i'm satisfied but if you have any other questions we can we can go over them no i mean i personally for me the big thing was like i said you know uh they basically that last study we were referring to which sort of branches off of the whole point of the article but it's basically saying uh, sex role is something that's determined over time, and there's a lot of factors, you know, that that go into it. Like I, I liked the fact that in theirs, um, they said things that they investigated were like, uh, does the participant in the study find the bottoming pleasurable? Mm -hmm. uh, do they have sexual anxiety when bottoming? Sexual anxiety when topping? Um, strength slash control of a partner, mm. which I found interesting. Uh, gender uh, of the partner, penis size as a factor. Mm -hmm. Um, and race ethnicity of the partner. I, I was like, whoa, like that's actually taking in some things that I think are very important, but I don't know if other people would have considered that initially. Um, well, I, I think we could describe your, your interest more of a psychosocial interest in, in this topic. And there's people who have the biological interest in, in this topic as well. And we know that it's a combination of all of them. It's, yeah. Again, it's not just biological. It's not only psychosocial. And usually the psychosocial, we tend to believe it's it's more interesting because it's more malleable than what we think bio biology could be, right? Uh, but biology gives us, th this is just in general terms and broadly, bi biology gives us the tools that we need, right? And then the environment gives us the, the things to use those tools. Um, so at least in, in my point of view, both or the three biopsychosocial factors are pretty important for us to understand the whole thing as opposed to just like this one little speck of it. Uh, and then again, like for us to know all the biopsychosocial uh, things that are related to sexual role takes some time and it takes a lot of work and like more people uh, investigating other things that may have been completely uh, overlooked. Um, but yeah, I, I I do believe that the psychosocial one is a little more interesting toward the end of this article, um, just because it, it gives us the a little more nuanced um, sense of what's going on. 
right? So I have a question. I think I already know what the answer is going to be. If we read like an article about a, a study, it doesn't even have to be about sexual, but like if it claims something like, you know, um, men who have hazel eyes are more likely to be, you know, uh, cock whores, whatever. <laughs> wow. Is Where it is fair? your mind? <laughs> I'm just trying to, I'm brainstorming. My That's point just... is the concept of the title, like the takeaway is based on the fact that we're recognizing that there's kind of three areas. That particular one seems to be very specific and probably would, at least for me, I would raise an eyebrow at that. Mm -hmm. I, I would uh, be like, mm, okay, I'm not really sure about that. It seems I think the, specific. The eyebrow raises because of how we interpret that, that claim, right? Yeah. So I think the claim is being accurate. Uh, how we interpret it may not be. Um, yeah. Blue eyes being related to huge dick uh, means that you are finding a correlation. Again, that, that doesn't mean that all the time, all people sure. who have blue eyes are going to have huge dicks. Uh, it just means that, on average, guys, or, yeah, guys who have blue eyes may have huge dicks. But you may also find blue-eyed guys with small dicks. What do they um, mean so, by huge? Do they mean thickness? <laughs> do they stop think? it! Is there a combination I thereof? Do this, is there a factor there? I knew this was coming because all of a sudden, anyone that's listening or watching is like, wait a minute, I have these color eyes. What is <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is a hypothetical, right? Yeah. Mm. Mine was. I don't know where you're coming from, Cisco, but you know. <laughs> no, no. I, I'm explaining based on, on your hypothetical. Uh, so there's uh, no self analysis, you know, in your history. No, this is this is. Uh, <laughs> I don't believe I have read anything tying the color of eyes to the size <laughs> of a penis. Nice. Um, but yeah, so the it, it's it's important for us to start understanding how to how to interpret um, when one thing is related to another. That doesn't mean that it's causing another. Another. That doesn't mean that a hundred percent of the time. Um, is explaining one is explaining the other. It's it just means that on average, uh, an effect has been found, and that could be like a small portion of people or a huge amount of people. Uh, unfortunately, these kinds of articles do not explain that that part. So it, it's it's fine to have like a, an eye out and be like skeptical about the claims. Uh, but it's also important to understand that the claim is not claiming more than it is. It's yeah. just that we may be interpreting for more than it is. Some data has given this sort of potential thing. Let's make a hypothesis and start brainstorming and seeing what we are, you know, figuring out if there's some real truth or fact or something that could be determined behind it. Yeah, if if the body of research tells us that guys with blue eyes have bigger dicks, then then we know that the effect is there. Again, it doesn't mean that 100% of the time, it just means that there's a pattern there. Yeah. All right. Blue eyes and big dicks, that's... <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what everyone's going to take away. To be like, I heard it on a podcast. I know. <laughs> nice. Drew wants to know relative size if bigger than a banana. Is that what we're talking about here? <laughs> but the reality is, what kind of a banana? I mean, is it strictly a banana? What about plantains? You know, I mean... Is it curved? Is it strange? <laughs> How curved it is? <laughs> What's its <laughs> ethnic origin? Like, its country? Does it come from Peru or, you know, someplace else? <laughs> is it ripe? And that is... That, there, there's research about penis size and all that stuff so we, we can talk about that in a, in a different podcast i just I, I was just not ready for that topic <laughs> no it's okay i'm sure we'll um we'll, we'll figure some of that out we'll in, definitely in the time back. yeah no it's been um, awesome i appreciate you being willing to come on and and kind of help like i said distill out this and basically this article i don't think it made a big splash online um compared to some others but uh, probably because of a couple of factors is that one of them I think is length a little bit and that it was detailed. It wasn't, it was not a um, Buzzfeed, you know, 
three things you need to know that science has found or whatever. Yeah. So Yeah, be be careful about those. They're just uh clickbaits, yeah. Clickbait. Nice. Yeah, I've, 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 that's one of been my one of my problems at work. Is like, what the fuck is this? Let me click on that while I'm at work. I'm like, no, I... uh, <laughs> stop, Damon, stop. I know, right? Ah, oh, nice. Okay, no, those are entertaining. Just, just know that it's very limited. Uh, Go in there. For right. now. It's actually absolutely the opposite of what you had. In any case, should we go on? Speaking of clicking and baiting. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, uh, uh, let's do this. Nice ass and beard and belly. Aww. So we got wait and see W E I G H T for wait uh, and C S E A. Uh, uh, posted a picture. I don't know what it's through or if it was cropped or what it's doing. Maybe it's just a weird mirror on a wall. Uh, but uh, it's basically him taking a selfie with his back from his backside. And it's very nice. I agree. <laughs> wow. It is a nice picture. I will give it that much. Well, yeah. And it is a mirror. As I'm looking at the wall a lot. I'm, I know, Jeff, I'm not focusing on No, no, on this is fine. This is fine. Okay. I'm still kind of wondering mirror. about... But it, it is a mirror of yeah, some sure. kind. Because you can tell that there's a wall. And I'm seeing that red thing in the corner is leaning against the wall. And it's like you're getting the... Oh, um, it's like a, a... I think it's, it's a probably, handle. Yeah, it's a yeah, handle. Yeah, it's a handle of some... Okay. Yeah. Maybe so it's a like a strange mirror on a door. Or something. Yeah. Cuz there's a I see a cord in the in the reflection. Yeah. No, that's fu- that's fine. Yeah. I was kind of just wondering how the image got that way and then take yeah. too close it's, of a look, so. It look it looks like it's a it's more than likely uh, if that's a front door, it's probably a mirror in the hallway and it, it's just, mm. you know, a, a, a mirror or what have you. And it's just a really good angle. And honestly, it, it's a perfect fit given what we're looking at. So, mm-hmm. yeah. 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 And, he knows how to use the mirror. Uh huh. And reblog. <laughs> 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 that, that, that was just, that's a really good, like, it's hitting a lot of buttons. Like, it's a nice button. Everything he's got, else. he's got the three beer, the three B's. He's got beard, butt, belly. Like yep. all of it's going on. Definitely. He, he I think mildly... we should not forget those legs. Mm-hmm. I think we should not forget those legs. Those legs are. Yeah, I've got, yeah very that's nice. Yeah. Thighs. Yes, that is very true. It is. Yep. Those are some very nice. Yeah, it's a nice body. It's a also. it's a whole complete package. Yeah. yeah, and I will have to say this: I know it's not. But he kind of looks like Bailey. I was going to say oh, that too. Oh, yeah, he does look a little bit like uh, Hadrian's Bailey. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, well, I maybe, knew it wasn't. Maybe Bailey will replicate this picture for us, and then we can do you know a side by side comparison. <laughs> and it doesn't have to have that mirror on there. It can be how, it can be through a mirror, but it doesn't have to be that type of mirror. <laughs> and he's yes. feel free to inbox us. So. <laughs> Am I included? <laughs> yes, In this case, go. we probably should Yay. share. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He'll send it to us. We'll share it with you. So. Yeah. Perfect. Damon? Um, this one's called Meet Me on the Roof. Um, but it has nothing to do with that. It's more the story in the, the text. Um, I think this is Pork Belly. Um, and... He's he's on the ground and he's, I mean he's beautiful first of all, and he's got these really interesting boots on, and I love and this is just random. I love how color color coordinated he is. Like there's a lot of greens everywhere, including his crotch. So, um, <laughs> and then it says um, 
there's a you know quotes and says, "Hey boy, would you like to meet me on the roof tonight? I got a surprise for you." And it says, "Tonight I'm giving the judges memories of this one gardener my mom used to hire, who had beautiful eyes and would wash and dry his underwear outside and hang them in the in the trees." Uh, realness. I'm just it's <laughs> I it's. I, it, I know it's kind of a, meant to be like a re- reference to like RuPaul's Drag Race, but it's also super fucking hot and obviously um, some some memories are flying in here. So, and it, I think it's also another um, reflection in a mirror picture. So, yep. um, there's that. <clears throat> but yeah, super hot guy. Wow, um, nice little to- you know, story and a little candid RuPaul Drag Race reference. Yeah, it's interesting because he's uh, sitting on the floor, <laughs> not exactly cross-legged, but, you know, he's got, <laughs> the, he's got a little bit of traditional uh, late 90s, early millennial bear wear with a <laughs> sleeveless flannel shirt on. <laughs> but he's got a harness underneath it, mm-hmm. which is part of what I think you're referring to, Damon, that's yeah. color-coordinated because there's yeah. kind of this olive green kind of thing going on between the harness, the flannel, uh, part of the socks. It's one of the colors that's in the um, floral printed boots that he's wearing, which yes. are, are pretty wild. Um, yeah. And then he's got a very notable kind of uh, dark Kelly Irish green uh, pouch. It's, I don't know if it's a jock or underwear or what it he's doesn't wearing. doesn't matter. I know. <laughs> <laughs> It accentuates everything well, and it's it won't, just a, it won't be on there for very long. No, well, depending on what kind it is. It well, could, I it, suppose it, if it is a jock and he's bending over, then he wouldn't necessarily have to take it off. But so exactly. Anyway, but yeah, it's a it's a very good picture, and I just it. He's a very handsome man, and and just it's everything about adorable. it just grabbed me. So yeah, there we go. I found adorable sexy, by the way. So just talk, kind of referencing <laughs> last week. Huh. Adorable and sexy all at the same time, and I may. Oh, you're so adorable. Take off your clothes, basically. <laughs> so, <laughs> Gary. Okay, I'm gonna break everybody. So just be forewarned, and I blame Hadrian for this because he actually. <laughs> 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 all right so hadrian <laughs> hadrian posted on on tumblr mind you hadrian is in orlando right now at like tidal wave slash gay days so the fact that he took time during his bear run experience to post this on tumblr says something so hadrian uh the hadrian x uh dot tumblr.com is his his uh, blog for naughty stuff and this one is kills me Hadrian wrote guys 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 stop what the fuck you're doing and go to this site now it broke me for a solid hour and, it's, it's... and what it is is it's reblogging from a new tumblr profile called gay dash sex dash kittens so it's gay sex kittens and the person who created it said I put Craigslist Craigslist ad titles on photos of kittens meow follow meow <laughs> and this particular picture is of this innocent looking little kitten in a field with like purple flowers around it and in big bold letters above it it says rape my hole I have poppers <laughs> <laughs> Oh fuck for play let's bear back says the little kitten in a little wooded area Oh, God. I clicked over into the thing. Yeah. <laughs> I got my, I got right. out my rib chair for you. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and then just the facial expression on that cat. <laughs> Dominant daddy for rim slave. Oh, no. I, 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 I'm going to have to look at this later or else I will not be able to focus on the rest of the show. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're just they're awful. They are. They're <laughs> terrible. Horrible. Horrible and just ah. and hysterical. Ah. Fill fill my gaping, gaping hole straight only. Straight only. <laughs> okay, all right, away, away. <laughs> Move it on. Let's go in the later. <laughs> the links. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll be broken for an hour. Uh, yeah. Like, uh, uh. Adrian was. Um. So this one, I actually. Oh no, it's gone. Oh, never what? mind. Just ignore me. 
<laughs> um, the video that I was looking for is gone. Well, uh oh. Scroll up. You gotta try, oh, try to oh, click oh, on this. Oh, <gasps> it's gone. Uh, yeah. Never mind. Ignore me. Maybe I'll find it. Let me go search it. Maybe you'll find it. Well, I'll, I'll. While you're searching, I'll do mine. How about that? Yeah. Oh, right. YouTube took it down apparently. <sighs> Such a thing. Well, anyway, um, so I've been following this um, Alonzo Larone for a while on um, um, YouTube, and he's just—I mean, he's just a regular like blogger, you know, YouTube blogger or whatever. And he posts these very funny, you know, things and he goes online and finds stuff. Well, given the most recent trend of, of rompers for men, AKA romp hymns, um, he, um, gave the quote unquote top 30 funniest tweets, um, hashtag romp him. So it's just him going through several of these tweets and just laughing at them. And, um, it's, it's, it's funny. It's a hilarious and, um, the romp him things are just it. I don't. I don't even know what to say about it personally. Um, I'm on the fence about it. I, I kind of like the idea, but there's a part of me that's like going, no, that just doesn't. That no, it just no, it just doesn't work. I don't. There's something in my head that's saying it just something is not quite clicking in my head, and I feel like if there, if we go this route, I, I don't know. But I've always been, there's a part of me that's like, oh, there, it would be a really nice idea to have something something similar for men to wear, but I don't think I want a romper per se. But yeah, the video's funny. It's just him, you know, reacting to and, you know, talking about several of the different ones. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, anyways. So, <laughs> there's that. Yeah, that rompers is a thing, and then I, I'm not putting it in because I don't know where it's at because I didn't watch it or anything, but Caswell apparently uh, has got images and or a video about lace rompers. <laughs> For men? Yes, it's just, it's problematic. <laughs> I think it's meant to poke fun at them altogether as rompers uh, but yeah, uh, i'm just like all right i can't i'm not even gonna like yeah it's it's bad enough that hadrian broke me with gay sex kittens and <laughs> like i just i can't handle more not right now maybe later maybe later so yeah uh. um my uh pick actually is one that is kind of geeky but i don't know if people are going to be interested in it or not because it might be a little controversial i happened upon it by accident on youtube um, I was watching from Tested with Adam Savage, formerly of Mythbusters. He was on the set of Alien Covenant and was like looking at the props and talking about the makeup and all this kind of stuff. And it was really cool. And YouTube auto played over through a couple of different videos. And this happens to be one of them. It's called Alien Covenant What Happened to Elizabeth Shaw? And so there's, it, it's a theory, it's a 10 minute video that basically is presenting a theory as to what connects Prometheus-ish to Covenant-ish, um, and how you got certain things that were revealed in Covenant that didn't exist before. Hmm. And it's not official by any means. It's not approved by Ridley Scott or whatever. But And because I haven't seen either Prometheus or Covenant, I ended up watching it and then being like, whoa, that's an interesting proposition, <laughs> like conceptually, even though I know nothing about all this stuff. I, like, <laughs> Huh. So I, I don't know if other people are interested or not, and some people might have a very high opinions and say that this guy's like Office Rocker or whatever, but it's already had over a million views. Wow. So, right. I'm actually think... interested. <laughs> yeah, so, I, I, I do like these type of videos. Alpha has a, a, a got science thing that talks about, like, one of them was about the relation about all of these different types of aliens and how they could possibly come to be and how how it works and kind of like the sex the scientific side of like the actual life cycle of a uh, xenomorph so i like these type of videos they're cool yeah, yeah. so it's a uh, it's it's definitely interesting. Um, I can't disagree with what is proposed, but then again, I didn't see the movies. I'm also not a fanatic of the, you know, the alien genre universe. So, but if it's 
true, or potentially true of what he proposes, then it, I don't know, it, I did, couldn't, I was like, yep, got it. Like, things kind of fall into place and it makes sense. <laughs> so. I think, um, well, I have not seen the video, but I, I think Alien Covenant was pretty good at explaining what happened to her. So I'm, I'm intrigued about what new information they're integrating. Well, given that, Cisco, maybe this video isn't expounding or going off of that too much. Maybe, I mean, it does reference Covenant and some screenshots and some mm -hmm. different things. So um, maybe it's stating more obvious for those that have seen the movie. I don't okay. know. Yeah. As a layperson who didn't know anything, who didn't see either of those two films, I was kind of like, oh, okay. Because there's a, there's a reference to the fact that there was that teaser movie, like that mm -hmm. sh little short or whatever that came out right before Covenant was released. Yeah. And it was meant to answer a question from the end of Prometheus and mm -hmm. sort of tie into Covenant. So um, I was like, oh, all right. Because I actually did sort of watch that. I was like, oh, all right, there's there's something, and apparently it's supposed to help understand the next movie. I don't know. Never. Nah, just a little. Yeah. Huh. Good. So, um, while we've been talking, I did, I've had done a, a little thing here, because we were talking earlier about um, showing people how they can customize stuff. Hey, guess what? I set it up. So oh, right cool. Now, um, if you watch the video, you can you can see this, but uh, I've got the uh, website up here or the uh, store up here, and I'm gonna click into one of the t-shirts here, and it says like I'm gonna do a double XL because I'm fat. Um, but here there's a it, it the basic t-shirt that I selected for this has colors. And just has a certain number of colors here. You can click details to find <laughs> more and get more information about it. But you can also hit the style and hit more, and it has like one, two, three, four, five. I don't know how many different styles of T-shirts that you can look at and uh, get like a men's football shirt. Hmm. It is one of them, or men's champion three quarter. And uh, you can also just go ahead and, and change the colors for each of those. And they did have different selections. You could get a long sleeve or a short sleeve and, and different styles. And then you could add it to the cart when you've uh, decided on what you would like. Cool. So there you go. And for those that are wondering, apparently the Men of the Den crew have made it to Germany. As of about <laughs> the past five minutes. So, yeah. So no more I haven't heard of I haven't heard of any uh, any casualties yet, so because <laughs> even Hadrian said, or not Hadrian, whoops, uh, Chester. Wow, that was a big flub. Um, <laughs> even Chester said, I think that he. I don't think he's made it all the way around yet. Meaning, he's gone the whole way. You know, obviously around Epcot, but not been able to drink it every single country wow. as they go around. So um, my thought on it is like, uh, perhaps you should pick lesser potent things. <laughs> ah! That's a very good suggestion. Yeah, to me, it's kind of like, well, it sounds a lot like Power Hour. It's like, yeah, if you want to do a, a hardcore, you know, spirit shot every minute for 60 minutes, uh, it was nice knowing you. Um, <laughs> or yeah, you that's going to lead to the hospital. Yeah, or you could go with, you know, a malt beverage, a light beer, you know, something else that's, you know, not so uh, problematic. So I don't know. We'll uh, We'll see. How they're doing they've been they've been doing a little bit of live video while we were on so i was kind of like oh i want to see what's going on but we're, <laughs> we're also doing this thing yeah. well we're we're i think we're done aren't we yeah that's it yeah with how i showed everybody the uh thing because i was able to do play with contact us pop over to our website cubsoutlaw.com uh, you can also go to click on the col merchandise link and get into that zazzle store um, you can um, shoot us an email at cubsoutloud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail like uh, the person earlier uh, at 361 we'll talk That's 361 <laughs> You can follow us on Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, Google Plus, and YouTube at the appropriate place, put Cubs Out Loud. Um, and subscribe to us on YouTube so you can find out when we're live. And you can also watch this video if you're listening to the audio. You can actually watch this all on video as well um right. help us with the uh, streaming rig at gofundme.com slash cubs out loud or coll stream excuse me as you can see below me 
Uh, you can also uh, join us over in the Bear Underground, the official Bear website of Cubs Out Loud. Uh, and join the Cubs Out Loud entourage group there and say hello. It's it's not just for us to post about the shows. You can also, you know, chat about whatever. doesn't have to be necessarily be specifically about the show. But to all the fans, uh, if you listen to us on iTunes, give us a rating there. Uh, you can also subscribe to us in Google Play Podcast and give us a thumbs up on Stitcher Radio. You can find me anywhere on the internet. It's box up, box puppy, box cub, box something or other. Um, I am Theater Cup 79 on Bear Underground, Tumblr, Growler, Scru- no, Hefnet, and um, yeah, R- R- and Facebook, sorry. Or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. And if you want to find me pretty much anywhere on the web, just go to uh, type in Care Bear 73 Cisco? And you cannot find me. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone has any more questions about this article or anything, uh, you can email me at Cisco underscore XXI and Hotmail.com. Cisco is spelled C-I-S-C-O underscore XXI at Hotmail.com. Sweet. Yeah. yeah, be sure you put in XXI, not XXX. It's someone completely yeah. different. <laughs> oh, not a good idea. It would not be me, and probably they will not answer your questions. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, say good night, everybody! Good night, everybody! Have a good one, y'all. Have a good one. Drew has the Seawell muscle shirt. Ooh. See? We can get all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pick. <Okay>. Nice. <laughs> I'm watching the the live <sighs> video of um Aaron's doing the video in Germany for the men of the den. Apparently they must be using like one phone and just passing it around because Chester had it at one time and like I think Derek had it so It was the official men of the den phone. Yeah. I don't know. Unless all of them have admin access or something, I don't know. <laughs> it's kinda of comical because like Chester's feeding Evan and then they're like, I don't know, they've got cookies or something. And notably, I'm seeing uh at least a couple fans so people well, are, you know, hot out. <laughs> that's true. Uh, Florida, June. It's interesting because they're the design of the shirt that Chester came up with is different than when I went uh, with Jeff, Drew, uh, William, and uh, Ron, and that when we were there. Oh, girl, that's a big old fan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if size is important when it comes to a fan, but anyway. Um, I look into the research. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. So, um, <laughs> Kudos to you, Cisco. That was a good one. That was yeah. a good one. <laughs> if it's cute. He's fixing his hair. So, anyways, uh, when we wore our shirts, ours looked like, uh, kind of like a softball team. Because mm-hmm. they were all sleeveless, and they had this big, you know, kind of sparkly logo on the chest area. And then they had, like, a nickname on the upper back across the shoulder blade. So everyone kept asking us, you know, like, oh, are you a part of a team or whatever? So. Okay, are, is someone else watching it now, too? Yeah. Evan's on it. Go yes. there, Chester.
<laughs> he sounds pretty drunk. That's Aaron, I think. He's one of the oh, British guys, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, then it's probably the accent. Oh, they bought fans in China. Oh. <laughs> Look at the kind of things that you have in Germany. You have breakfast, the onions, the things. I'm thinking I want apple strudel. Apple strudel sounds good. Okay, I'm going to stop this. I'm also going to stop the stream. <laughs>